here we go. Check. Kaboom. Oh, wow. Okay, way to nail the 2000 in like five seconds. That's amazing. You would think that a 2000's seen that trick before. You would imagine. Uh, I've probably seen it before, I've probably played it before, but it bears repeating that checkmate takes precedence over check. Um, yeah, starting with three seconds makes uh, the opening moves pretty chaotic. Okay, so I've never really learned Check. this opening. Um, Check. Well, Knight F5. Kaboom. Wow. Okay. You know, by the end of this tournament, I just might understand what's going on. Um, certainly, I knew F4 was playable. I had no idea Knight F5 could follow it, but that sounds logical. I guess Knight F5 compels Black to push the E pawn due to the explosion threat on E7. Um, however, I guess Knight G7 is also threatened, and I'm not sure what's going on. I mean, Knight G7 threatens to take all of Black's pieces, right? So something is... I'm, I mean, I'm sure somebody's going to refute this at some point, but um, that seems like it just is instantly decisive somehow. Is there a sound only setting for Twitch? Um, let me check. I mean, yeah, I could turn off the mic or I could turn off the game audio. Um, there we go. Okay, so here, oh, bishop b4, I've never seen that. That seems quite clever. If that works, I just might have to try it in my own games. Um, Check. It takes, oh. Kaboom. Oh, really? Kaboom. Why, would, why would you do queen takes? Kaboom. I'm thinking that's a mistake. Queen a, or queen b5, okay, yeah. Rook c4 is forced or king h1, but king h1 looks terribly scary. Kaboom. And yeah, now white's kind of busted. Just a little bit. Uh, oh, that's Check. right. Yeah, that was necessary. I was going to say, why didn't you just play queen f3? Because of h takes g4 winning the queen. Uh, that works, though. Very clever. Uh, well played. And that takes, unfortunately, it takes Unihedron a little step away from um, his goal of 2300. Which he's going to get. It just might take a little while. Okay, now this looks decisive because, I mean, Black's lost his rook. I mean, when you've lost a rook and your pawn cover, things are pretty scary. Kaboom. Kaboom. Check. Set, or yeah, I was going to say queen d7. Check. I said queen g7 and realized g is like way up in the corner. 
and I really meant queen d7, as in this move here. I spotted that. It's a pretty standard move in Atomic um, against somebody who doesn't know what they're doing. Although he's the tournament leader, so he must know, but... Uh, how is he the tournament leader? Okay, so I don't know the Latvian. Could um, be. Oh. Well, that works. I guess that's why knight f7 doesn't work in that opening. This is a very tricky game. Um, and a lot of people push e4 and e5 and don't really know what to play against most moves. Oh, the kaboom sound is too quiet. Okay. Let me change the sound set. Right now I'm using the robot sound set. Let me switch. There we go. I find the robot sound set kind of entertaining how it just says kaboom, kaboom. As if it's like not even a big deal. Whereas, uh,. Explosion sound does get tiring after a little while, but it's a lot easier to hear. Um, let me check my audio balance. Okay, I think I have my normal audio balance in place. Uh, hopefully that works a lot better. I could try listening to it. Preferably when there are moves being played. Oh, does somebody not like my coloring scheme? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, at least the board looks nice. You might not agree with my choice of colors, especially for the, my choice of multiple color palettes, like having yellow here for the highlighted move and having yellow for the streamer name. Uh, like, a, a strictly blue and green color palette would probably be more palatable than what I have at the moment. Um, I just care for my theme a little bit better than I care for the default theme where everything appears in gray. This is more colorful. It's not beautiful by any stretch of the imagination, but it's colorful. Whoa, I did not expect that one. Very sneaky. Oh wait, no, but there's a point. The point is that if d3 is captured, that's check. So actually taking d3 is illegal. That's clever. And the point of queen h4 was to gain a tempo to push d3. Okay. I think I followed that. Or it says queen h5 happening. Oh, this is a different line. What prompted this move ordering? I think you have to take the queen, right? Yeah. Okay, castle. Or that. Uh, okay, and now black is down on material and probably. Oh. Oh dear, bishop c7 looks not so hot. If black had found knight d3 and knight d2, that would have been something else. But yeah, 
Well, I can resign that. There's not enough pieces for it to be worth going on. Taking f5 might equal things a little bit. Actually, yeah, take f5, take g3 with the bishop. Although, you take a pawn takes f5, g4. It's really difficult for black's rook to get active, so... Yeah, I guess black's still lost, but it takes some technique. Yeah, if white hadn't hung a piece that final move, then uh, that would have just been decisive. Yeah. <laughs> yep, 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 I've seen this one before. I don't think this is any good for white. Uh, he's lost his queen and his knight. Uh, whoa, it's d4 playable? That's crazy. Okay, that's GG. Because of that. Yep. Strictly speaking, queen f2 would have been faster, or even queen e2 would have been faster than queen g2. Okay, queen g2 works. It's easier to spot. It looks cooler, and it makes a big boom noise, so that's pretty cool. to go wait okay somehow many pieces got traded not to the way I expected uh, Unihedron got a sneaky check in there and okay he's probably better anyhow but Bishop e8 uh, is sneaky it forces black to spend time moving his king and he just didn't see it that's part of the fun of these O plus one events is that really anything can happen. Um, Bishop B4 is pretty standard. Uh, ooh, castling. I don't see that often. It's amazing. Yeah, white badly botched that opening. Uh, E3 is quite passive. C3 is also passive. I mean, yeah, I get that you don't want to play knight c3 because there's tactics involved, but at some point you need to use all of your pieces, not just your queen and your white squared bishop. Okay, so what's with this knight b5 opening? Oh, right, because black can never take b5 because of bishop b5 mating. Although I don't know if that's necessarily the case if the king can go to f7 but probably because of queen h5 it still works out for white um, okay there's f6 is scheduled there's c6 is scheduled there's oh we trade i guess it makes sense if he's under fire oh there goes a knight with that, most of White's chances of uh, winning this. Okay. So, why would you sack the... Uh, I guess if you're trying to save time on the clock, maybe, but... You can't just give up material like that. Do that. Oh, now you're dead. Um, I was gonna... S oh, he can't move his king. If he could move his king... There'd be all kinds of ways to get that rook active, but now he... White's been too slow. White needed to use his rook to go mate black, instead black used his rook to go mate white. White definitely had really strong chances there. Um, there's just too much going on for me to commentate on, or comment on. Um, I can try. But it's just too much.
Knight e4 tends to be lethal uh, due to the dual threat on d2 and f2. Um, and even castling would not get White's king out of that fork. See, yeah, knight to the center tends to be lethal. And that's yet another argument in favor of pushing the pawns forward two squares instead of one. Generally, having pawns immediately adjacent to your king is pretty dangerous. Um, it might take a while to expose that danger. Like, uh, oh, what's this? So, got distracted here. Um, takes queen's force. Bishop takes rook. Oh, white missed bishop takes rook. White could have had a rook, man, and then he would have just brought his rooks out and made it black. And now white has to get a rook to e2, and now he's dead, and black missed it. And black is still ahead of a ton of material. But knight takes e1 would have won. But anyhow, I've completely forgotten my original point, thanks to those multiple developments on that game. Oh, you need arrows. Oh, goodness. We'll try to do arrows, okay? Here's an arrow. This is an arrow. This is an arrow. But no, um, it actually looks kind of cool. So. There goes the knight. Black gave up his queen. Uh, if it's got to move, g6. There, this is under attack. Okay, you have to block that using the knight. White's intending this stuff, and, that, and that's GG. I don't know if I could keep up with the arrows with the pace at which this is getting played, but we're gonna try. <laughs> uh, okay, Unhedron gets white again, but he's gonna try to sack on these something around here. C3, threat on D2. Uh, okay, who knows the knight guards H6. This knight's a valuable defender. Now it's a text H2, which she can be missed. Miss those things. Uh, now we see this, and then that. Oh, that works too, and then e2. And gg. Oh, left click clears all arrows. Oh, that, okay, that's useful. That it, I forgot. Usually when I'm playing a game, I'm afraid to left click to clear all the arrows because I don't want to accidentally move something. But as a spectator, sure. Yeah, I could do that. Okay, here's the threat. Bishop's going to threaten to take... Oh, he's not using the bishop. Just the arrows forced. Um, let's see. G... Oh, okay. Yep, there's the fork. Very clever. Um, yeah, I don't know, like... Atomic openings at all. Yeah. Chess is pretty special like that. It They changed the rules in the last week. If you're paying attention now, anytime you do a capture, um, an explosion happens. Yeah, they, this got passed as the new FIDE official rules of chess. Um, and they just want to make it more exciting for spectators, you know? So, along with their push to have faster time controls, they decided... Yeah, let's change how the pieces move and add this thing and not exploding. And, you know, while we're at it, exploding takes priority over the check. Um, you know, just to make it exciting for people. All right. Hopefully they're going to get more co corporate sponsorship as they do these sorts of moves. I don't know what 
would be wrong with Atomic Crazy House? You tell me. There was nowhere to move this bishop, and so... Actually, you should have just blocked on f6. Like, knight f6 would have stopped the bishop. I mean, okay, this is scary, but what are you going to do? Obviously, you can't do what was played in the game. So, yeah. Unihedron's opponents occasionally trick him into missing two-move tactics. And when those two-move tactics happen to involve a king, that kind of hurts. Okay, so black's down a queen. The rest of this game is of little consequence unless white really messes up. Kaboom! There we go. So wait, how did that queen get lost? Oh, queen f6. He's trying to be clever. He should have gone here instead. Anyway. Yeah, that sounds like a fantastic idea. Just make sure to propose it to Fide and send them lots of bribe money. And I'm sure they'll allow this game to be change the rules in chess just for you. Oh, so the point is that even if this pawn did move, there's knight there and then knight takes bishop. Another pretty standard crazy house trick. And yet another reason. Oh, huh. Okay, black got greedy. Now this knight causes all kinds of havoc with this, like knight g5, knight takes there, or knight e5 knight d7, knight f8. Basically, these two squares right next to the king are problems, especially when the pieces can't move. So, like, it's important that black um, get one of these pawns moved early in the opening. Um, okay, this leaves a hole behind. Um, oh, so the other game, Unihedra played knight f5. This game he played knight b5. I'm not sure I understand. Oh, there's check and mate. Not sure I understand the difference between knight f5 and knight b5. Maybe there isn't any. Uh, I mean, if you had a horde, king of the hill, and racing kings. We had all of those things at the same time. I guess you could say that the horde occupies the center, so the pawns win that. However, black's king's already on the eighth rank, so black wins. So yeah, I don't know. It's wait. Could that knight have just taken the queen? Uni, Adrian, what you doing? Why are you hanging your queen? You know that Stockfish would spot that sort of tactic. Knight takes queen, right? Heck, even I spot it. But maybe I wouldn't have figured it out fast enough. Okay, so I've seen this queen c5 a lot. Oh, I guess, yeah, the point's just to trade queens and win a piece. And try to play out a winning endgame. d4, bishop h6, bishop e8. Bishop, oh, come on. Bishop e8 would have won on the... Okay, fine, that wins. Actually, bishop g7 mates in 2. Unless king f7. But then bishop takes f6 instead. So. Yeah, bishop g7 was mate in two. Unihedron castled instead, just because castling's fun. Uh, why not knight d7? Like, a couple turns ago, this is possible. I guess it didn't do very much. Um, 
Yeah, no, he's got his knight to the other end of the board, which turns it into a queen. Um. <laughs> Unihedron's fatigued already? Nah. He's just having some fun. He's winning so many games so easily that he's trying to make it more difficult for himself. That's what's going on. play e6. That's really passive. I mean, I guess e6 is saying you're afraid of knight to d5. What about knight g5? Oh, okay. GG. Yeah, white's lost his initiative, so black just needs to castle and make use of his rook. Oh, so much for that theory. Unihedron grabs an extra piece over here because White was too lazy to move his bishop away from the explosion site. Uh, yeah, that's check. Rook c3 is check. Oh, okay. Well, bishop d5 stops mate. Otherwise, rook d8 would have killed Black. Uh, rook d8 is still a big threat. Okay, should have moved the rook. Should still move the rook. Should move it again. Move the king. Oh, dude, white could have, white actually had that kind of, no, white could have forced a perpetual, which is not bad. I definitely would have taken perpetual as white, uh, take the knight. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, yeah, queen takes knights forced. Uh. I don't know what that opening was. What the heck? What? What is Unihedra doing with these weird openings? I just don't understand. Knight takes queen. I guess players like trading their queens for knights. Maybe the queen is actually worth less than the knight. Maybe that's why they're doing it. Okay, maybe the rook's worth less than a bishop. What do I know? Uh, so white needs to activate the rook and use it to mate black before things go bad. Oh, free rook, never mind. H1. No, no, that's very bad white. Now white has no winning chances whatsoever. You needed to keep the rooks on the board, man. I know it looked bleak, uh, and it looked like keeping rooks on the board was not a good idea because it would be difficult uh, to win. But how much more is it difficult to win, is it, when all of your pawns are blocked? You have no potential for a passed pawn. And even if you did get a passed pawn, you're still outnumbered, and all you have are just pawns. Yeah, connecting the kings is a good try. Um, but no, you have to keep the king, keep the rooks on the board to keep some drawing chances alive. Knight g5, knight f7? No. Now e3 is necessary, I guess, to prepare knight f7. Oh, that's bad. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Pretty standard stuff. Uh, white just missed it. Of 
course, it's easy for me to say that while I'm not playing. Okay, now I'm going to see how this opening is supposed to be played. E5? What? What are you doing, Unihedron? Don't give up your queen unless... Well, okay. What the heck? How is that winning? I guess knight takes g4 induces this threat. But surely that's stoppable, right? I mean, surely there's a way to prevent that from just killing black outright. I don't understand. Alright, positional atomic chess. White's given up the f1 square and. I'm sorry, the f1 h3 diagonal. Making it a lot more difficult to safeguard as king. Uh, yeah, that's why you don't put all your pawns in the same color square. The queen transitions from one square color to the other, and you're just gone. If not for the queen, maybe putting all the pawns on the same color square would be okay. But the queen switches from one color complex to the other very quickly. Uh, very much like a hot knife through butter. Alright, and queen... T oh, he missed... He mouse slipped. Queen d4 was the move. No, he didn't mouse slip. Queen d4, knight takes e5. Okay, so queen c4 is clever. Bishop e2. Yep. Knight. Okay. This is check. That's check. Uh, bishop takes bishop wins, but, you know, that's legal too. I suppose if you're flustered and, like, up 10 seconds on the clock, yeah, maybe you'll miss the mate and one. Um, is this opening? d5? Okay, that's probably okay. Knight takes check. Oh, this isn't check, but I call it check. Move the queen. No, you have to trade. That's right. c6. Okay. Use your pieces. There you go. Move the knight. Um, move the knight. Nope. Okay. Now black's just down. So this is definitely tricky. Uh, oh, 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 black got me dead. For no good reason. Um, I guess there was no way out other than hoping black would mess that up. That was quite lucky. So now I'm understanding why you would play that opening. It's not because it's sound, but it's because it's tricky. Kaboom! I saw that. Oh, I guess that means that, that was all winning. Like, white have to play this or something. Uh, we're going to be h3. Very tricky. There we go. So the point of this opening is that it's tricky. Certainly not that it's sound. Oh, there's GG. Oh, except, like, yeah, the mate in one threat. It's kind of a bummer. Still, I mean, this bishop g5 must be preventable by h6 or g5. And white's down a queen, and what's white gonna do? Knight f6, uh, oh, that's not what I usually play. I usually play d5 instead of d6. There must be some point of guarding c5 or something. Bishop f1's already moved, so bishop g4 is not the queen. Um, let's check. Can we get the, uh, why would you do that? Why sack the queen? I'm not understanding. Okay. Why leave the queen hanging like that? 
Is it just because it's bullet? Or is it because a queen's just a bad piece? Oh, let me move my cursor. There we go. Put it over here somewhere. Um, C6? Oh, that's too bad. I mean, yeah, I guess once you trade off your bishop, your king is pretty much gone. Much more so than in normal chess. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, you don't want to give up all three of those pieces for the white knight. Yep. And there you go. Bishop takes. F8. And GG. Yeah, yeah. You're probably right that the point of two knight g5 is just that white's bored and trying to do something. I've never seen it before, so I never really appreciated how dangerous it is. Uh, but against a prepared opponent, it appears defeatable, particularly if the opponent does bishop takes g4 instead of knight takes g4. Actually, it dawns on me that uh, if you give up both the bishop and the knight, bishop f8 and knight g8, that's when things get critical. If you have either one of those, you can have black squares and your pawns can have black squares. This is the threat, rook d8, and I'm pretty sure that that's just crushing. Um, bishop g6 might have stopped it. Bishop here might have stopped it. I don't know. Certainly white had the initiative there. Black was completely undeveloped. Um, but who knows which way that would have gone. Well, we do, because black didn't move. So we know that white wins. And that's forced. Ooh. Wow. E3. Oh, okay. Oh, ho, ho. that's not good. Wait, how's that made? Oh, double check. Very clever. Well played. And so, the tournament number 10 seed takes down the number 1 seed. And the number one seed remains the number one seed, but takes down in the sense that he beats it. Right. Why would you take the queen instead of, like, almost never you want to be the one initiating exchanges. Like, if you can gain a tempo by forcing your opponent to take your piece, do it. Instead of yourself doing the taking. Okay, that was forced. And now black develops. Ooh, giving up two pieces for one. It's not so hot. A4. Just push pawns on the queen side. Maybe trade rooks first. Maybe. Oh, there's a passed pawn. And I appear to have lost my network connection. Uh, but surely white is winning that. I don't know what happened to my network. Am I still live? Let's find out. Okay, my network to leech us is back up. Uh, leech us is down. Ooh. Huh. I guess uh, Unihedron played a really good move. Like, a really good move. Winning that multiple passed pawns uh, with rook versus bishop and rook. Winning that endgame just put the server in such a tizzy. That's what happens. Um, 
You just have too many good moves. Oh, so with that, um, oh, you're changing the time control. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I guess if most games finish before they start, that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, huh. Okay, so, well, let me go put on a little sideshow here then. Why not? Take a little bit of liberty. Oh, um, yeah, I'm not logged in. Let's see. Let's take a minute or two. We'll play a game with the machine. Who doesn't appreciate some atomic? Oh, I don't have sounds. Here we go. So, I don't know. Let's play knight f6. d5. Takes e5. The computer does know this is atomic, right? So I'm threatening to take he- Oh! That hurts. Uh, that hurts just a bit. Uh, can anybody help me figure out what to play here? No, I have to play that and just get mated. Uh, let's try that again. So. Do, do, do. Uh, sure. Okay. Something like this, maybe. Uh, okay, I'll take that. Uh, do Let's castle. All right. Uh, uh oh. Okay, I have to block with the bishop, right? So I have to block with the queen. Oh, I was just gonna expect him to trade queens, and then I'm like dead, but. Here I'm even deader, all right? Wait, what? Why, why are you not taking my pieces? There must be a, oh. Very clever. I'm trying to force you to take me, and you force me to take you. And this means you get more turds to check me. Uh, okay, I'm gonna win this stylish. You just watch. I'll somehow, yeah. Okay. Let's see, are we back? I think we're back. Let me refresh the Unihedron TV. We can forget about my losses to Stockfish and focus on some great chess. Yeah, well, it has to be okay if it can beat me. This is true. <laughs> so, how did this last game go again? Played all those moves, then Unihedron played this e7, and it was so good um, that it lost on time. But you know, other than losing on time, it was fantastic. Uh, no, but could Black have won this? I think so. I mean, like Bishop a3, just move the bishop out all the way across the board. Uh, hang on. To remember that scroll wheel scrolls through the moves list, but also scrolls the page. And then you just like play your bishop here. White plays something. And then you play your king up and your rook over and try to win before you get mated. It really is a race at that point. Now I like this bishop move though, because it stops the white pawn. I guess this pawn could run for it, but that seems dangerous. In the meantime, Black's pawn can run 
And hopefully White won't see that he can just take it. And if White does take it, then maybe the Rook comes out, and who knows. Well, Black has some serious attacking chances. All right, our tournament continues. <laughs> White goes Berserk. Uh, that seems ill-advised. Can I just, yeah. No, that, that's really ill-advised. I would not go Berserk. Oh, there's check and check. Oh, or just mate. Yeah, that works too. Usually I just follow the king around by checking it with the queen because all the contact checks uh, pretty much mean that uh, there's, well, there's no way to block a contact check. And so the king has to keep running and the queen keeps giving chase until queen takes something next to the king. I can understand why you would change it to 30 second chess. I think that this, yeah, O plus one atomic is just too chaos, too, too much panic. Very much just playing on reflex and hoping that the opponent's gonna miss something. Uh, 30 second is a little bit slower. hasn't developed his right side. However, black's up a million pieces, so he should probably win this. Yep. That works. It's true. Yep, going berserk is certainly an option here. Maybe we will see more intelligent opening play um, when players aren't incentivized to try to do cheapos to win on the clock. But we'll probably also see a lot more mundane play where a player just tries to keep as many pieces on the board as possible and survive until the game ends. And just wait for the opponent to run out of time. can't say for sure that that's what's going to happen, but uh, I think there are going to be instances where a player just plays objectively boring moves until, uh, until a few seconds until the end of the game, and like when both players have only a few seconds left, only then will he play something new and original and try to play for the win. I expect that that's the pattern that will emerge. <laughs> Way to survive. Way to survive. Dear, why would you go berserk? Uh, what's this queen d1? I mean, this is the kind of nonsense I was talking about where you just hope that your opponent runs out of time and it doesn't really matter what moves you make. Uh, okay. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, queen f is forced. Bishop g2 is kind of forced. 
because of that. Now bishop f5, the queen's able to go around because, well, no, bishop f7. Then bishop f7 is next. The queen steps around it. And uh, black just... Eventually, the queen is going to check the white king. It's just a question of how much time until that happens. Yep. And that's why bishop g2 was necessary earlier. So white could play bishop f3 in response to queen f6. And f file would be plugged. And maybe there would be some chance of later playing rook f1 and getting the king out of the way. And then the rook coming down on the open f file. Unlikely, but possible. Going berserk in 30 second chess is pretty ballsy, too. I don't know that being black has much to do with that. Um, one thing you will notice is that players do play more aggressively as white, but I'm not sure that white's much better. White does have some advantage, but against good play, it appears to be pretty balanced. That's probably true in most chess, but I think it actually holds true in atomic chess that if you have two players of similar skill, um, okay, white gets some initiative in the opening, but that skill is not going to decide. I'm sorry, that opening initiative is not going to decide um, in very many games. All right, so bishop f3, knight d7, knight d7, okay, maybe that. Bishop d5, oh, that's not good for black. Yep, that's GG. My earlier suggested knight d7 got the king a little bit closer, or got the knight close enough to the king that queen f4 could be met by just putting the knight in the way. But I guess uh, white's probably still winning there. But yeah, keeping the knight too far from the king made it impossible to defend the king. Oh, so he's moved away from this knight g5 trick opening. Uh, okay. Knight takes. Yep. That works. of pawn wall g6 queen a5 <laughs> yeah. and that wins a lot of pieces and black just wins at his leisure uh, oh that's clever usually I don't think of going to the dark square there usually I think of like putting my queen um on this file and trying to like strike here rather than trying to move it well it's hard to explain if you don't if you're not familiar with coordinate notation because things are flying left and right piece here you gotta hit the queen uh, gotta move the queen here or do that Yeah, I predict that white will lose this on time. Although, black is moving very slowly too. Um, black could have won this on time if he wanted to. And if he didn't play bad moves. But, um, 
There's a difference between playing good moves and avoiding the worst moves. Um, like, you don't have to find the best moves. You just have to find moves that are good enough to run the clock out. At least when you have a time advantage, that's the case. Take there, push some pawn. Um, e6. Make this one up. If you don't, yeah, see, you failed to push that, so now white has a little bit of time to. Because it's a cheeky threat, white takes to stop it. Black should be moving a lot faster to win on time because white's not going to checkmate him. I mean, the odds of white checkmate him. Oh, okay. Thankfully, it was black's move. Otherwise, this bishop here would have been a real mate threat. Um, but yeah, black can win this on time. He just has to find moves that don't suck. He has to move his cursor quickly. And black wins. As predicted. Or as at least anticipated. If I were to say I was predicting at this hour, I would be wrong. But um, yeah, when you're up heavily on the clock and there's no chance that the game's going to end anytime soon, you can pretty much play anything. Just play some move that ensures your king doesn't go kaboom in the next few moves. And occasionally throw in a mate threat here or there just to confuse the opponent. Alright. Move the queen. Okay, at least he's getting his bishop out. Or just moving all his pawns. Which is a fun thing, I guess. Yep, there we go. That's a good queen move. I saw that. Bishop blocks. Oh! Oh, well. White screwed. Kaboom. Yeah, I didn't see this capture on F3 exploding E3. That's really good. Well spotted. I was so busy looking at where can I move my queen that I didn't consider maybe it doesn't have to move. Supposing I were in black's position. Yeah, 90 games down, 910 to go. It's a lot of games. In particular, when most of the games uh, last at least 30 moves. It makes it a little bit more tricky to set the record. Or set a... see the explosion. That game happened too quickly. Um, I'm so tempted to unleash a wrong on this. Because um, I'm not sure I can keep up with it as well as he can. Huh. I'm surprised. Loses the, okay, at least, yeah, as predicted, that loses the rook, uh, and possibly more. Pawn moves, you have to move the pawn, uh, okay, or just give up on time. Uh, but no, you have to push your pawn, so pawn takes pawn, mate is not an option. And you have to hope that that passed pawn does not crush you. It probably will. But it might not. Okay. Yeah, I think I might take a breather here and uh, let Komarov handle some of these games too.
or I could just let them pass without commentary. That might be another option. That might even be a better option. Yeah, I'll be back in a little bit. Games got pretty serious pretty quickly.
game. What a show. Too bad our champion did not come out on top that game. Uh, still, he's in the number one slot, so he's done pretty well. Creed still has to catch him in the tournament. But he's below 2200 yet again. I think the O plus one format's pretty hilarious. Uh, this is just super competitive. Yeah, for sure this is more serious, uh, less lighthearted stuff. Oh, I didn't see. Creed's has a rating of 2390. Hmm. That could explain how um, he's good at this game. Or at least good against Dunahedron, is that he's just good in this game in general. Um, so I don't understand this material imbalance. Notice how neither P player is capturing things. They're both waiting for their opponent to capture. Uh, and they themselves only capture when it's to their advantage to do so. Which is a tactic I've often used. Um, my problem is I don't know where the pieces go. But put the pieces on the right squares and I'll find the tactics. There's a lot of subtle maneuvering that takes place, even in Atomic. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I could turn that down. Let's try that. I forgot. My mic's way over there. Um, but yeah, I was just saying that, uh, I don't even remember what I was just saying. Oh, that there's just a lot of positional maneuvering that I don't understand in Atomic. Um, I get the tactics, the tactics all make sense, but putting the pieces on the right squares is definitely an art. <laughs> oh, I see. White had almost no time left. That's why White was moving so fast. I was like, White's not going to win this on time. Why is he moving so quickly? It's because uh, he didn't want to lose on time. That didn't work either. I'm going to move my mic. Let me mute it, and then I'll move it, and then unmute it. Okay, hopefully it picks me up a little bit better now. I wish somebody, like, had some animation skills. So you could see pieces vaporize. And so in Crazy House, when you drop them, they would apparate. Um, I'm trying to think of the visual effect. Like, there's some name for it, and it's a pretty common visual effect. Where 
I mean, you see this kind of effect in Star Trek where people beam in and beam out. You just see them, like, pixels of them appear, I don't know, and more and more pixels appear. and Like, it's the whole beaming in and beaming out effect that would be more interesting. Uh, I doubt that such a thing would be cross-browser uh, compatible, but it would be hilarious if it were doable. <laughs> Yeah, and no, I'm completely with you that that's exactly why, or that's one reason why animations and browsers would be quite challenging. Um, it's because you want this to be something that works on everybody's computer and everybody's browser, as long as they're using a browser that isn't awful. Um, and so, yeah, you don't want to tax older machines, and you don't want to make the site difficult for anybody to use. And gosh, if I could do this uh, visual effect through like a CSS style, that'd be hilarious. Uh, oh, the word dissolve. Yeah, let me see if there's a CSS dissolve effect. I'm going to wager no. But let me see. I don't know a whole lot about CSS. Okay, well there's a fade effect. How does that work? Okay, there's a... Wait, is there a transition element in CSS? Or a transition attribute? Um, White overlay, 150 milliseconds, then red, 150. Ah! <laughs> huh, that's clever. Yeah, I can understand bountying your issues if you don't, if you're unfamiliar. Uh, Ah, I see. That's too bad. Yeah, it's fading doesn't look nice. Um, I don't know. I'll maybe in my spare time tinker with it too. It's definitely tricky. And even if he comes up with something that works on one computer, 
finding a solution that works for all computers on Leech Us might be a problematic. Well played, Unihedron. Very well played. And that takes Creed's below 2400. Yeah, the tournament position indicator is really nice. Like, in a tournament, you can see your opponent's rating, and that doesn't always tell you very much. But seeing that, hey, I'm playing against a 1500. Oh, and by the way, he's the number two seed because he's beaten everybody this event. That kind of information is useful. Um, as opposed to, your opponent's rating is 1500. You have no idea how many wins, losses, and draws he has. But you do know that overall, uh, his performance is that of a 1500. I don't know. Ratings really rarely tell you the full story. Queen e2 or e1. Queen check. Queen check. Oh, yeah, that wins. I always look for the most difficult way things most difficult way to do things. Um, sometimes there's easier ways. So Unihedron's still in first place. Somehow Creed's is not the number one seed or number first place just yet. Uh, Well, if you keep going berserk, your rating will decrease. That's just how it works. Um, so, I wouldn't worry overly much about rating if you keep going berserk. Because it's not going to be accurate. Uh, or rather, it will be accurate, but for something other than what you intend it to be accurate for. If you intend not to include Berserk games, uh, I have opinions about the rating system, but it's all very complicated. a mate on e2 threat that pins the queen uh, and the knight to the center that was weird i guess that was forced but that lost oh oh wow i did not see all those tactics you know how like in DBZ, they, in Dragon Ball Z, the cartoon, they have these uh, martial arts tournaments where eventually they make this big deal about how all the best players are, or how all the best, not the word players, but entrants, tournament participants, fighters, fighters is the word, how all the best uh, fighters uh, are able to make moves so quickly that the entire audience can't even see what's going on. I definitely had a moment like that the previous game, where after queen takes queen, bishop g4 wins, because after white moves to e pawn, the bishop to e2 gets played, and there's no way to move the king away from the bishop, and yeah, white's just getting mated pretty summarily. Uh, because this king's got nowhere to go, and the explosion's going to happen when bishop takes bishop happens. So, all that was forced because of queen takes queen, by the way. 
It's tricky to show some of these things. I can talk about them, but uh, demonstrating them while covering the live game is a little bit tricky. And that's not Lee Chess's fault, that's just the reality that covering one game while talk, well, talking and covering an older game while watching another game is just complicated. There's no way to really keep multiple boards in sync with what I'm talking about. Alright, so get the open file, rook to e2. That's not rook e2. Okay, just be tricky. King blocks, pawn up, pawn up takes, pawn up takes. Oh yeah, that's right, you have to connect the kings to have any chance of drawing that. But white can promote long before the kings connect. Still, that's a good try to trick the opponent. Oh, that's interesting. So if white had played pawn takes pawn, black has no passed pawns anymore. Uh, technically, black could maybe arrange to win, but that's highly unlikely. All right, what have I missed? In here? Um, do I plan on working on a crazy house engine? It really depends what you mean by plan. Do I seriously plan on making it happen? I'm not sure on that. Um, might I idly think about an experiment and tamper with it? Eh, maybe. It seems like a lot of work. Um, there's a lot to think about, and I do idly think about it. Like, right now, my AI uh, uses a combination of two programs. One that plays all the opening moves, and one that plays the rest of the game. And the opening move player needs to have some way of representing the game, such that it can compile opening books and detect transpositions of things. So I need to formulate a way of modeling um, how many pieces are on the board. Um, and how many pieces are in each player's hand. And one thing that dawned on me this morning is that, well, how many pieces can a player have in their hand? Think about it. Well, a player could have up to two queens, up to four rooks, four knights, four bishops, and 16 pawns in hand. That's the worst case scenario. Um, or the most challenging scenario is the player has the entire board minus the two kings in their hand, which can happen. So I have to find a way to represent up to 30 pieces in hand by each player or by a combination of the two players. So that would be tricky. Yeah. Ooh, that knight is pretty well advanced. Black's development is terrible. Holy moly. Uh, okay, it looks like Black's getting mated. Wait, why would you do that? You have mating two. Still had mating two, and now you're dead. <sighs> That's a pity. Uh, yeah, you missed mating two twice, and then black tricked you. I wonder. Just. Uh, I always have to wonder about these things, but is it possible that black hung the mating two, just so he could try to win what might have been an objectively lost position? And by that I mean, okay, Black could have prevented the mate in two, but he would have had to play some defensive move, maneuver, move, whatever, to try to stop it. And instead he just played entirely for the attack, um, and tricked White. Whereas if he had played objectively good moves that don't hang the game, or don't hang mate in two, um, he probably would have slowly been ground down. 
down on the clock or slowing down down on time. So he took his chances. As did White here. Um, oh no, White was actually up material. What happened? Ah, our hero is making some mistakes, I see. It's not easy playing this game. I much cared for the simpler version, honestly. The one where he just keeps taking pieces and just uh, winning in the game in a few seconds. Those were hilarious. This is pretty much more like somber and serious and competitive. Um, and arguably more meritorious. Uh, something where he ought to get credit for what he's doing and not isn't just messing around having fun although I prefer the fun side of this game like a lot of people take these variants pretty seriously I look at exploring the boundaries of well what's actually doable in these variants and what doesn't work it's as entertaining as what does also can I just say black um, he missed mating two once, so he wasn't going to miss it twice. Yep. I don't understand h3. If you're going to try to do anything to get out of that mess, you have to play h4 and rook h3. And just hope um, that there's no way to corner your king next to one of your pieces. what atomic would be like if both players didn't start with queens. It would probably be a lot slower of a game. The queen really is uh, a game changer in that variant. Okay, well, I guess maybe. Yeah, what if you were to replace the queen with a rook in the start position? I think you would see a lot more attempts to open lines. Okay, yeah, here Black or Unihedron's um, wisely keeping his aw king away from his other pieces. And now he's toast. This is just unfortunately. Oh! Uh, well, White missed mate in one. He played rook g8 instead of rook h7. But I was going to say. Uh, Black just unfortunately lost too much material and can't come back. Uh, you gotta know your tactics, guys. Rook g1 set up rook h7 mate. Uh, rook g8 looked like mate, but rook takes f7. Took both rooks. You have to be really careful when you have too many of your pieces right next to each other. GG. Check. Kaboom. Wow. I don't know where Creed's messed that up, but um, well played. Perhaps some of our esteemed audience members could tell us uh, exactly where some of the mistakes are being made. I myself can uh, follow tactics, but strategy is another matter entirely that's just alien to me in this variant. That's why I largely don't play it. I mean, I don't know the openings, and I don't know the strategy. I do know the end games. I do know that you have to get a rook on an open line and then put it right next to the opponent's king. 
And that's like 90% of the atomic endgame theory that you'll ever need to know. Just get the rook on the open line and find a way to put it next to your opponent's king. Uh, other than that 90%, I guess 9% of endgame theory is don't get zugzwanged in pawn endgames. Um, it's easier to not get zugzwanged if you have more pawns than your opponent. And yeah, the remaining 1% of endgame theory is pretty fascinating, but almost never happens in practice. And queen d4 is happening next. Wait, no it's not, because knight takes e5. Queen c4 is happening next, and then taking c2. Yep. That's clever. So I've got to try that sometime. Uh, this e5, f5, queen, h4 thing. It seems like opponents fall for it pretty badly. Okay, is e5 good? What is this e5? Good? I guess it stops black from playing e5. Uh, okay. GG. Or not. Yeah. Well, that was lucky. Let's keep going. Let's do this. Let's see the comeback. Uh, no. Wait, what the heck? What is Creed's doing? Yeah, no, that was... It's been there forever. Move the knight. Although d2 might have been better because of this. Now there's no way to block the f-file, whereas if you've done knight d2, then you'd have knight f3. Rook h1, rook g1, rook takes one. Bummer. Yeah. Knight c3 was not accurate, but what was probably lost there anyhow. Again, I don't know what this opening stuff is, but... I can evaluate those endgames, and that black followed that endgame strategy perfectly. Get the rook to open file, move it next to the opponent's king, and just keep checking them until you take something and it's mate. That's a lot of endgame theory right there. Just know how to use the rook. Knight c7, there goes the knight. Uh, in exchange for black's whole army, and now black should resign. Minus the fact that he's up 10 seconds, so maybe he wants to play it out. It could be interesting. Okay, white missed bishop e5. White missed, oh, white saw bishop f2. And now he sees bishop b5. And I guess king f7. Yeah, that doesn't work. Oh, king f7 loses to queen takes e6, so... Okay, castling was a good a try as any. Yeah, no, I'm keeping my AI in my own tournaments. Thank you very much. I'd rather not, at least not now, probably not for a very long time. Not until people are comfortable with the idea of people and engines residing in peace with each other. Um, which is probably going to be a long time from now. I do like the idea of using AIs for analysis. Okay. Queen A4 is kind of fun. Where's this queen going? Where's the screen going? Oh, okay, there. Okay. Actually, yeah, black's in trouble. Pawn takes pawn. There we go. King f8, queen f3, knight f6, pawn takes pawn. Black's still in trouble. I saw all this. I'm 
at least a 2,000 strength player then, because I saw something that Black missed. Uh, I'm not sure I would have played better, but I would have tried to avoid that. A forced line where Black has almost no options and gets made uh, very quickly. There we go. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Sorry to be impartial like that, but... Yeah. Black spotted a good move. Bishop d4. Apparently this is what you do when white's played e4 in knight f3. Because if he just plays knight f3, knight g5, you don't bother with bishop d4 because your queen might be headed to c4. Okay, d5. Knight c6. Knight c... okay. Rook. Oh, yeah, I just moved the king. Never mind. Knight takes three. Uh, c6. Oh, no, that works. That's good. C6 would have stopped bishop e8. But here, I guess you've taken the rook. And maybe you'll find a way to maneuver your rook around that bishop. Or just play h2, h1. Yep. All forced. Just sheer brilliancy. <laughs> hey, you're going to keep playing in this tournament. I'm sure you'll find somebody to give you the points. Here's Creed's again. Ooh, Knight H3. I've seen that before. I don't understand it at all. Okay, so that stops queen c4, that the e3 move does. g3? g3 looks forced. Queen g4 looks forced. Okay. Oh, what's this queen g6 thing? I don't understand that. So white might be up a little bit of material, maybe. I think he's up a pawn. Okay, he castles and safely plays h3. Black gets past pawn. And Black's going to try to promote the past pawn. Uh, keep the rook on the open file. Rook e8 again. Rook e2. Or rook e1. Um, ooh. No, it looks like white's toast. Promote. Yep. That was a well-played game. Again, I don't know where white went wrong. I'm able to spot the tactics, but... <laughs> oh, Unihedron. Uh, he says he's muting it. running user scripts or something if you want to try um, sound effects or other things on a smaller audience first. Also, can I get my mouse to move? Sorry about that. Um, although user scripts are a bit tricky to write, so I guess you're able to test on your own machine. Tweak this. Ready. 
ready. Pew, pew, pew. Okay. Kaboom! Oh. Could be. Yeah, that would be surprising, now, wouldn't it? Could be. I like the new effect. It looks beautiful. Could be. Uh, I'm gonna switch back to the standard sound palette. Boom. 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 <laughs> it's just such enthusiasm. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. That's clever. It's really fortunate, too, because that queen was starting to go to E1 with good effect. That really looks beautiful, at least to me. Of course you know I'm gonna, well, huh, I'm gonna look at the code change and see how it was accomplished and see if I could do any voodoo with it to make it, customize it for my theme, because that'd be cool. Okay, so the chest ground has the hooks for the explosion. Ah, excellent. So this is CSS driven, and I could customize its colors and styles and whatever to my own choosing if I wanted to. That's excellent. So, yeah, if I want to have some really wonky, weird explosion effects, I can tamper with that. Um, it's pretty cool. Oh, cool. Yep, I see. Yeah, I was just looking through the diffs. Uh, that really highlights the changes that were made.
Hang on. Yeah, that's a pity. It's a pity to lose with so many pieces so well placed. sense. Uh, I understand I could change the CSS, uh, but changing the JavaScript would be a big ordeal and probably well, it wouldn't be a good idea for me to tamper with it anyhow. And I don't really see a need to do so. I was just more curious. Um, Okay, we were about to see a perpetual there until Black just walked into it. Well, that was fancy. Hmm. Oh. Yeah, let me... Let me load up Lee Chess over on this screen and I can experiment with things. style Hey, Creed's is a good atomic player. If he goes, you won't have anybody to play against. And that's the strongest argument I can come up with for you shouldn't do that. Um, he might be your nemesis and all, but that doesn't give you a right. I mean, like, he's not a supervillain. He's just a nemesis. Um, oh. That's... Oh, okay, wait. King F1's okay. Oh, that, I don't like that decision. Yeah, White's gonna regret that decision. No! Knight takes... Uh, what the... F okay. Well, that works, I guess. It's not what I would have played, but it worked. Um... Uh, I mean, yeah, in so many arenas, um, somehow it's acceptable for a supervillain to be killed off, but a nemesis? No. Nemesis, nemesis have to stick around. At least if I know my comics right, and perhaps I don't. Uh...
this would look like with a different color palette. Well, it's entirely up to me to find out. If I come up with anything that looks hilarious, I'll definitely try it out. Um, or definitely should feature it here. I'm guessing it might take me a few tries to get something that looks anything remotely compelling. Uh-oh. Yeah. But Rex is the number 18 seed. You could still win. Okay, fine. Maybe you can't. <laughs> but hey, you can at least get your goal of playing a thousand games, right? Even if, like, a lot of them are against Rex and don't necessarily end in your favor. Because uh, Rex is good, too. Rex and Creeds are both pretty decent at the game. Oh, green actually looks lovely with this theme. And hilarious. Uh, yeah, so... But do I want to do anything instead of the color white? Actually, that looks... Yeah. What if I try blue instead of white? Or cyan? I might have a new theme on my hands here. Yeah, starting with a green explosion and fading to side. Maybe I should start the other way. Yeah, let me try saying uh, green fading into cyan. I say as I forget my color tables. Sorry, I keep saying that backwards. What if I start with the explosion that's in cyan, which matches the color of most of my theme, and fades into green? Hmm. Wait, did I just do that backwards in terms of how I coded it? And also in terms of how I explained it. <sighs> I need more booms to happen. Actually, I can just watch the tournament page. I can assume the mini relay boards also show explosions. No, they don't. Okay. But regardless, explosions happen pretty frequently. Yeah, I'm not sure whether to go, whether to start with cyan and go to green or vice versa. I think the way I coded it looks nice. We'll try it on the big screen. We will try this on the big screen. As soon as I get all of my peripherals together. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I should have linked, um, shoot, let me get Nightbot in here. I've got a link to the rules page. I should probably need to update that link. If I haven't already, but I think I have. Let's see. Yeah, um, 
rules. I think I have a link to the rules page, right? Come on, where's my rules page? There we go. But I think there's an updated URL. Let me go grab it. Um, yeah. I'm going to update that. I have the link. It's just leechus.org slash atomic. Um, I just need to punch that into my nightbot commands. And next time I type exclamation point atomic, it'll know what I'm talking about. Um, and let's get the short description. Nuke your opponent's king to win. Nuke your opponent's king to win. Okay. And of course, Nightbot won't let me edit the command um, because it's being silly. That's okay. I can delete the command and get at it. Not a big deal. punch that in the chat window again. Aha! Unihedra knows. Yeah, the, the URL looks a lot nicer. There we go. Aw, oh, shoot. I have the EN in there. Did not mean to put the EN in there. I mean, yeah, that'll work. It'll resolve and all, but um, that's not the link I intended to use. I'm going to try this one more time. Atomic. Leechus.org. There we go. Much better. And yeah, I know the HTTP is not necessary, but it really points out to users what's going on. And that I'm linking to something that they're supposed to click on that explains instructions. Because if I just put in a bare URL, some people won't figure it out as easily. So that's why I put HTTP in there. But, okay, cool. Um, Looks like ETH Rocker just got ETH rocked. Okay, but no, I'm going to edit this style. Uh, okay. Uh, mm. CSS, copy it. I'll always tweak this later. Uh, so yeah, I said for my color scheme, I'm going to use some different colors. Don't require as much red. And uh, there we go. And 
and yeah, now our explosions will look just a touch different. You know, if explosions do occur. Oh, I see. The explosion effect happens and then we fade out from that. Got it. Just seeing it up on the big screen um, really helps clarify what's going on. Ooh, ouch. Yeah, Knight G4 is kind of decisive. Um, because after Queen takes Knight, there's Queen H4. Oh, that hurts. Castle early and often, but um, be careful. Because, <laughs> yeah, a castle king, I don't know, it's not a position I see very often. So I'm not so familiar with it. But I'm sure higher rated Italian players know it pretty well. I'm trying to decide, do I switch the green and the cyan and that? No, I, but I think it looks fine as I have it right now. So most of the screen, or most of the squares flash cyan. And the center square flashes green, I think. I could just be imagining that. Hopefully that's not too distracting. If it is, I can tweak it again. Okay, pawn blocks, you just take... Oh, never mind. Chess sucks. Our good friend Che, or Chess sucks. Yep, he won on time but also had more material. Um, hmm. The problem is, yeah, knight f6, pawn takes pawn, and knight's gone. Um, these openings are tricky. There really needs, there needs to be a forced take back mode. <laughs> Like, if a player wins the game too easily, it just compels a take-back for whatever reason. That'd be an interesting mode. Maybe the uh, April 1st trick. You beat a player who's higher rated than you? Well, too bad, because he gets a take-back. <laughs> There's no way that that would work, especially not with the rated game. Okay, well, so the question is, who's going to win on time? To my surprise, our champion pulls that out. That's pretty amazing. 
considering that all black had to do was pre-move to promote a queen and then pre-move again to mate in one but I guess uh, black missed it so yeah well played 32nd atomic is just really difficult on the nerves so mates in one and two can often be missed Kaboom. Or not. Kaboom. Oh, White missed it twice in a row. I mean, at least he sees the threat against his own king. He might miss knight takes h7, but um, he's not going to miss the threat on his own king. Uh, all right. Yep, yep, yep. Got the attack building. Queen for two is not bad. Uh, Bishop g2 stops the rook. Oh, and I guess, yeah, actually white is in trouble because if the king moves, the knight takes pawn mate. So that's a bit of good luck for black. White got materialistic. Forgot to develop his queen side and paid the ultimate price for it. Twenty-one, twenty-one. That's a fancy looking rating. F six. What's this F six? And then in response to F six, we see knight G five. And I officially do not know. Um, yeah, I would have played this too. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I hesitate to play queen takes a2, but... Ooh, wait, wait. So you take the queen? No. Okay, f4 is forced, and the queen develops, and that takes queen. Pawn takes queen, right? Okay, now we saw queen takes pawn. And now black is just down a rook. I don't claim to understand this entire game at all. This is possibly... I mean, this is a theoretical game, right? Because e4, e5 is kind of important. And e4, e5, knight f3, uh, f6 seems important. And yet it seems that black is just losing a rook right out of the opening. So... What gives? How do you reconcile the fact that this seems theoretically important with uh, the fact that black just got trounced? Do you therefore say that this opening is just terrible for black? Or just that black's technique was completely lacking in that game? Um, so losing a piece out of the opening is awful. Especially if you don't get overly much compensation for it. Okay, so I never understood. Why do you play E... Oh, no, I get it now. E3 stops black from playing E3. Uh, Bishop F4 would have encouraged pawn takes F3. And white's kind of a sitting duck, so... Okay, I get it. Pawn pushes in the center can try to open lines. And even in cases where they don't open lines... Ooh, okay, it's forced. And now bishop h3, or just resign. But I would have tried bishop h3. Hope that white wasn't paying attention. I would have wasted my time. That's too bad. Really, it, it is unfortunate. Okay, so what am I looking at here? Current streak, 155 games. <laughs> the apocalypse ain't long enough. Oh. Feature the tournament leader on the tournament page as a mini board on the top right side. Hmm. 
It's a mini board. That's interesting, I guess. I guess featuring it somewhere means that um, the mini board could be embeddable or something, too. Well, no, it doesn't mean that. Um, I've been just trying to figure out how do I embed a mini board that follows me around, like that follows my games. Actually, huh, you know, I gotta think more about this. For really large events, if I could get a mini board, there's definitely place in my layout to put it. Um, like, you see this big open space in the lower left corner. I could cram a mini board there for my stream. It doesn't really matter what kind of mini board, but... Um, problem is, what if the mini board's the same game as the one you're currently watching, right? I mean, that's not the Leech Us's problem. That's my problem as the streamers. How do I get two unique games to show up? But... Um, it would be cool to see, like, featured games in the lower left if I'm playing and I want to see, like, hey, what else is going on? Am I actually participating in some kind of event? And are other people playing in it? Like, when I go to a tournament over the board, sometimes when it's not my move, I'll just walk around and take a look at the other games. It's a little bit trickier to accomplish that in an online interface, but anyway... Mini boards, the more the better. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how that would work. Looks like chess sucks just got grilled there yep there's no escaping your fate that from that one let me boost my speakers a little bit That's a really interesting strategy by Black to exchange in the center there. But interesting, I just mean dangerous. Takes. Okay, you gotta keep checking and hope that there's some trick here. Okay, now I guess Black's going for the perpetual. Kaboom. 
tough break. That could have been a draw if only there were an increment. If only. Creeds again. E5. F5. G5. Okay, it's not happening, but, um, what? What? You know, here, Dren, you told me that you don't fatigue. So does that mean you just aren't aware of those ideas, or I don't know. I mean, surely you must be aware of the possibility. Maybe it's just that Creed's is evolving to a new level, where he's just got this metagame going. somehow beyond the realm of the chessboard, Creed's is able to convince his opponents to play certain moves. 96 wins. Yep, yep, yep. Black walked right into that one. Even I saw it, and I don't know this opening. But I've been resting a little bit, so I guess it makes sense that I would see it and he would miss it. Yeah, there's a point to point D6, and the point is that you don't lose everything. But this hurts a lot, too. Yep, that was a nice try, and now black is hosed. On account of, well, queen checks everywhere pretty much wreck black. And there's one last cheat, though. Uh, however, white was on top of things. Also winning was bishop takes queen, but, um, or uh, several other moves, too. Like, I guess bishop b5 also won. Bishop pretty much anywhere wins. King d1 might have won. Um, and here we got our good old friend chess sucks. We keep seeing the same friends over and over. The same people who really enjoy this variant. Uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. White offers draw. Well, white's got to make a move first. White's clock keeps ticking. Five. Four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. Well, 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 well. Huh. I'm still playing another. Okay. I guess that was just a mouse slip or something. Uh, we'll go with that. And he plays with renewed vigor. Despite the commentator. Alright, queen h5. Makes sense. Uh, Lex down a piece, but up development. Wait, what was wrong with bishop c4? Bishop c4 would have got given the king the f1 square. See, now it's not as effective. 
but maybe it wasn't effective earlier. You know, rook d8, king s to run, king s to keep running, and on some more, rook b3, and yeah, there you go. Yeah, white missed his chance. He needed to develop faster and secure his king. It's not easy to do, but actually, wait, no, there was a problem. If bishop c4, well, I guess, no, that's check. It gives him the tempo he needs to play something like h3 or h4 and secure the white squares. Uh, it still takes forever and a half for the rook on h1 to get developed, but it's better than losing. Okay. We've got white as in king of the hill. I say in king just to be obstinate, but yeah. We all know what he's trying to say. B4. Queen H5. No! Okay, well, that, I guess that wins, but queen h5 and queen h1, and it sounds gg, but okay. I guess you're far enough ahead on the clock that, oh, white's missing g4. Okay, there you go. Yeah, if you're far enough ahead on the clock, you could play a lot of moves and still win. Um, but why not win the easy way? Sometimes it's tricky to find the easy way. Atomic's not an easy game. Atomic requires effort to find the best moves. Black's only try there was knight g4, hoping for queen f7, knight f2. Um, yeah, that's, it was an unlikely try. Or queen a5, hoping for queen f7 again. And queen takes d2. Or even queen b6. Queen b6 might have been sneaky enough. Yeah, I've got to remember that. There's a lot of sneaky tricks you can attempt. <laughs> hmm. It appears that the white knight has made it to the other side safely. Although to what uh to what purpose? Uh now why would you do that? Yeah, I mean, obviously you missed that tactic, but why not start off with knight e6 and then move the queen in the following way? Um, queen d1, there you go. Uh, yeah, white spent a lot of moves moving the same pieces, or at least moving the knights at least twice. And you need to use all your pieces, not just the knight. Unless that knight really lands on a good square, and your opponent's even more poorly positioned than you are. Uh-oh. Yeah, that hurts. I've fallen for that one before. I forget how to avoid falling for it. I guess before knight g4 you need to do something. Because once knight g4 happens there it's too late. You need to play like d4 or d3 and give your pieces some room to escape. Alright, d2. There goes d2. And down goes another 1900. So, these folks have been playing for a few hours. Or at least a couple. C3, bishop e5. 
bishop takes. Knight h4. Oh, g5. Okay. That makes sense. Point is it can't be t taken on account of queen f3. Wait, what's the queen f3 there about? Why'd you move it? Uh, I don't understand. How is the queen any better on f3 than it is on d5? I mean, it's one thing if there's no f pawn, but... There's a lot that I don't understand about this variant, so... It doesn't surprise me that there's one more thing I don't understand. I see that Creed's has taken the number one spot. I guess it's a well played Creed's, but. Um, okay, what's going on? So there's like. Okay, if that can be taken, then the Queen has to move somewhere. Oh, that's the safest place because of d6, then Pawn takes wins the Queen. Uh, Black's losing his Queen now. And white's queen uh, is going to move somewhere useful, right? Uh, wait, why not take on Passant? Yeah, now black is kind of struggling for uh, space. And that struggle is not going to get any easier unless white goofs. White might goof. It could happen. Queen takes queen, pawn up, no, you missed pawn up, which also lost. I guess king e6 is forced, but you're in dire straits. Pawn up lost, even if pawn g5, pawn takes pawn off assault, wins the king. Which I didn't see that until after I said pawn up, but um... Yeah, you have to try king e6, and it's probably still lost. Oh. I was going to say, something didn't look right here. It's uncommon for one mistake to happen by itself. Mistakes usually come in, in at least pairs. So if you blunder at the end of one game, be concerned about the start of your next game, is basically all I'm saying. Just because it's really common to just like lose focus or whatever and make a couple mistakes in a row. Either because of focus or just because you're emotional or whatever. Almost all players do that. They can't help it. It's just a very human trait. Unless you're, like, not human, then, then I guess you don't make like, two mistakes in a row. You just make one mistake and you just completely move on and have nothing to worry about. Alright, queen d4. Now, why would you sack on g4? Or why would you play to e5? There's a lot of shuffling you can do, but... Yeah, going to d4 directly could have saved you a knight. Alright, can black develop? I guess bishop takes, and now gg. So really not a whole lot to see here.
Well, that was a nice try. It's just hard to win when you're down pieces. I mean, I've seen myself blunder in pairs. What tends to happen in my games, though, is when I blunder, my opponent makes some error back, and I blunder so hard that, like, I don't know, computers, people, and everybody have difficulty processing just how bad my move is. And because of that, it ends up being brilliant and winning in some way when there's actually reputation. Like, a really clear-cut reputation quite often. It's just so... Uh, it takes so many moves to execute, but a lot of my ideas are pretty easily rebuffed or rebutted. Um, which works great for Blitz, because nobody sees the ways to refute my ideas before the time expires. Check. We have to go for a Perpetual. Fortunately, Perpetual uh, and Blitz or sorry, an atomic with so little time at the clock means just winning on time. Note that King, uh, Black did not play King F8. King F8 would have lost. He kept his king away from his other pieces. I'm going to try changing the sound palette once more. I'm going to switch back to robot and see if I can hear it. Maybe I was just imagining earlier that it was too quiet. Ready. Kaboom. 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 Check. 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 Kaboom. I'm not sure how to force a refresh of sounds and other assets that I've got cached. Uh, I mean, okay, somehow I pulled in the new JavaScript and stuff, but my sounds Kaboom. still sound quiet. Uh, let me switch back. You can all clearly hear the kaboom sound. Oh no, I toppled my mic. Let me go fix that. Here we are with Creeds again. Uh, and we're not going to play d5. Never mind. I'm not going to do what Chess Bra did, where he just walks out of the room. But, um, yeah, Creeds has got your number. What else can I say? He just knows. Like, before you make your move, he knows what it is. 
and E fixes move accordingly. Here we got the white pieces with creeds. Can we take him? F3. There is a move that'll to make you think. Uh, take the knight? Or don't? Okay. Wow. Um, this looks scary. But is knight g2 terrible? And by terrible, I actually mean terrifying. Uh. Huh. What a strange, strange game. And Creed's, to his credit, is playing quickly. And mate and two, all right, they have to avoid that. And then there's the mate and two threat. Uh, just one threat after another after another. Uh, and Creed stays on top on the clock and wins. That's an interesting try. Um, mainly with the idea of just hanging in there maybe having a pot shot or two at black's king but yeah creeds has got your number man he just knows i don't know how but he just knows what you'll do before you do it well spotted. I did not see that move. But I wasn't the one who played knight e4 either, so um, yeah, that's how I missed it. Like, if I understood knight e4, I would have saw the f2, or would have seen the f2 and d2 threats. Uh, so f6, right? Or e5. I always play f6, but e5 looks way more fun. I've got to start playing e5. Um, wait. Wait, what? Oh, OK. 
Okay, that stops the check threat. Or at least slows it. Yep, yep, D3 is planned. That stops the D pawn from advancing. And you gotta block the D pawn again. You fail to block it. And uh, Queen D5. And black has run out of steam. No, well, maybe. Uh, yeah, you don't want to spend time trading like white did. White wasted a tempo. That bishop takes knight on c6 was completely unnecessary and gave away the tempo he needed to secure his back rank. Um, although securing it would be actually too difficult. You have to play instead knight c3 to e4 and hope that somehow black doesn't find a way to check uh, the king while the king just sits on d1 with the pawn on d2. Um. Hmm. Queen f3, oh, or that. Yeah, that actually looks way more convincing because there's no blocking the queen diagonally. Unlike um, there would be a block on f6 vertically, or you could just take on e4 to win the queen. Uh, so, yeah, actually, queen g4 is like kind of a major improvement on queen f3. Why am I commentating? Atomic is hard, it's so difficult. Uh, chess is a difficult game, but somebody's got to play it. <laughs> All right, here we got Chase Sox again. <laughs> Bishop b5 is a nice little trick. I'm sure there's a point, even if it's not a trick. Although I'm not sure the point of... Oh, okay, I guess it does apply in this opening. That knight e3 doesn't win. Uh, so Why not g5? Why trade queens when you had queen g5? Queen g5 looked way more exciting. Let's see, now black has this miserable opening position to deal with. And why trade on c6? Oh, okay, because there's bishop takes h2. So that makes sense. Um, king g8 forced. Okay, that stops the bishop moves. That makes the bishop moves less effective. This takes the bishop. <sighs> Didn't take the bishop. That's unfortunate. Yep. Oh well. See, this is kind of why I was pining for O1. Because in a half plus O, they're just. Um, Time gets allocated mainly to the opening, and the remainder of the game is silly. Whereas an O plus one between experienced players, um, players with which you spend most of your time, they actually know how to survive the openings. Um, so that's kind of why I was leaning more toward O plus one than half plus O. Um, because Half plus O tends to lead to a lot of really long, protracted games against opponents who are just shuffling their pieces until your clock runs out. Uh, o plus one is much more about, uh, I don't know, winning the game on the board against an unprepared opponent. Yeah, that, that was just my personal opinion. Uh, no, it's just me here. Just Unihedron and myself. Granted, uh, there aren't enough experienced uh, Atomic players yet for that kind of format. But ultimately, that would be the format I'd want to go with. 
if there were enough talent out there. You would use just zero plus an increment. Um, Having seen all these atomic games, now I'm kind of like afraid. As, as tempted as I am to start participating, I'm afraid to do so. Um, because I realize just how much more theory my opponents would know than I would. Plus, there's so many much more fun things I could do than participate. Commentate is one. I could even do some coding on the side while this is going on, and I don't know. There's Competing is really uh, exhausting. Um, well played by White to find the draw there. Um, I think there was a perpetual by force. Oh yeah, because King G7, Rook takes G1. So it's well played by White to discover a draw. Uh, if you want my style, you can install this user style using a plugin called stylish um, oh but one thing is that published style doesn't contain my latest changes for explosions so like when explosions happen and it all lights up in green and blue um, that's not published yet um, I think I'm happy with the way it looks. I'm going to go publish that and let you know when I've got that change published. Oh, where am I going to put this in my in the hierarchy of all my things? Somewhere next to where all the other background colors go. Uh, right, so we got the pocket. And, um, hmm. Yeah, where do I refer to the board or some square? Okay. Apparently that's a new element in my style. Well, okay. So I'm going to put this next to the pocket in my style. Uh, and that'll be that. In to make this change. There we go. And publish. And it's last been updated now today. Very good. Oh, I probably should have tested that latest change before I published it. That would have been a prudent thing to do. Um, so, okay, yeah, it still works. That's cool. Why? Okay, I'm, yeah, no, that actually doesn't work at all. He had to take the knight, but maybe he was still lost there somehow. He had a choice between taking a knight in apparently winning material, or not taking it, and definitely getting mated. And he picked the latter. I just do not understand this game.
There must have been some reason he couldn't have taken and just moved his bishop away. I mean, yeah, it looked scary, but I don't get it. A uh, queen moves? Oh, and yeah, mate. Yep, yep. Oh, wait. I forgot. Damn, knight takes on e5 if you try to mate. But this wins a bishop, and a pretty important bishop. And there's the check. I guess bishop d2 makes some sense, but okay, it loses the rook, so maybe it's not the best move. And here's the part where you just try to run your opponent out on time. Again, an argument in favor of o plus 1. Um, however, white was paying no attention whatsoever and just got made it. So there's that. That's a thing. Amazing how players will miss things under this incredible, incredible time pressure. Here's a 1525 rated player, currently in 42nd place. He's got an opening idea or two he wants to try, and perhaps some more than that. So g3, and I don't know, d3, d3 is forced. Let's see, I can learn these openings. I think I actually want a bishop and a knight. Or, yeah. I didn't realize it wasn't so much material to do that. It's deep. Uh, nope. Nope, nope, nope. That doesn't work. Now you had to play like e3 or e4. And I was about to say d3, and then I realized that just because the pawn's on the fourth file over doesn't make that the d file. In this case, because the board's reversed, that's actually the e file. So, yeah, e3 or e4 would have been forced. So while all this is going on, I'm going to upgrade my instincts. Zerk. Why would you do that? Oh, I guess that's why. Yep. Excellent decision there, going Berserk. There's no way that possibly could have gone wrong. Upgraded my instance, and now I get things to compile.
Kaboom. Ah, uh, Creeds. Creeds is all on top of this. Oh, sorry, were you playing? I did not see anybody active on my site, so I... Uh, if somebody were actually playing, I'm sorry for interrupting that, but okay. It'll be back in a minute, guys, don't worry. And it'll have new kaboom noises and such. So, I was just looking at the server log and didn't see anything happening. Usually I log into the instance and check that way too. But uh, in this case I failed to do so. It definitely makes the opponent think, but um, I guess maybe queens aren't worth overly much in this variant. Yep, there you go. Oh, he's actually going to do it. That's the problem, is this just running h-pawn, and now black has to block with the rook, and it gives white's pieces time to attack. It takes a2. Oh wow, that was a more serious threat than I imagined it to be. Wow, okay, bishop f7. Actually, I'm sorry, bishop g8 was worth a try. No, it's not, because even though an explosion, well, explosion happens, it removes both black pieces, not just, uh, but it does not remove both pawns. That's amusing. I hadn't thought about that. C4, not Queen D4. See, I can eventually learn that Queen D4 doesn't work. It just takes a few tries for me to figure that out. And then Queen C2, apparently. I'm not sure why. I mean, there's got to be other places the Queen can move, but C2 seems to be the most popular square for it to go to. Alright, pawn moves. I'm going to check. King moves. Oh, okay, you're just gonna go for the material. It's logical. Uh, I guess White could have run his king to the corner and hung out there and hoped that Black's time would run out first. Is my instance back up yet? Come on. And there we have another win over 1400. Yeah, atomic openings are brutal if you don't know them. There's definitely a sharp learning curve. Um, 
Actually, I admit, I don't know very many atomic openings either. And frequently, as I commentate on the opening phase, I do air. All right, d4, knight g5. Oh, he didn't do knight g5, he did bishop g5. That's what's been tripping us up the whole time. Oh my goodness. Now I finally understand. Usually white plays knight g5 instead of bishop g5. Apparently both are playable. Uh, now I understand why this mistake has been happening over and over. It's because on a piece going to g5, Unihedron um, doesn't realize exactly what's going on. And he's um, playing d5, which I guess might be an acceptable response to knight g5, but certainly is not acceptable in response to bishop g5. That's probably what's going on. It took me forever to understand that. <laughs> uh, and then the IRC or in a car is having a little bit of fun. Ooh, we're going to have another contender in the tournament. Mm. I guess with a name like Atomic Apocalypse, it does attract a lot of people. And Unihedron is inching his way forward toward playing a thousand consecutive games. We'll see how close he gets. It sounds like a pretty awesome goal, but... Uh, definitely sounds like an awesome and terrifying goal. a strange way to lose. Um, I suppose there are worse ways to lose, so it's definitely a way to go. We got Creed's again. He's got white. I wonder if he's going to do that same trick or if he's going to do something tricky. Uh, d5. Of course, now knight g5 happens. So we've transposed, except the bishop is still on c1. Okay, so what gives? Uh, what is this opening? White has a queen. Uh, huh. I don't understand how that happened. Creed's is very strong for sure. Uh, he would probably crush me. I'm guessing that the mistake was castling, but um, it looks like Black was in trouble before that happened. It's just castling done him in. Uh, where there was just no defense. Uh, you're going to be crushed for entertainment reasons because you're playing entertaining variations. I can understand that. 
Yeah. Creed's has got your number. Um. Farzan apparently got one. Oh, uh, yeah, you intended B4. I've seen many players play B4 in similar positions. You did not intend B3. Uh, yeah, well that was easy. That was really easy. Yeah, knight f3, e6, and white just wins in two moves. We're just watching uh, Unihedron play some games. Oh, there's Rex. H4. Is H4 a thing? If H4 is a thing, I might start doing the thing. That's interesting and new. I had no idea that such moves um, don't like instantly lose. Politics. Uh. Okay. Why that piece though? Why not queen f3? Uh, queen. Uh, I don't know. I guess that's why not. So queen f3, queen f2. It's all confusing. Queen takes pawn. Uh, okay. That's all tricky. Still going for a mate right next to the king. Rook takes. And GG. Well played. Rex took too many chances that game, and Unihedron pounced all over that. Sometimes you do just have to roll the dice and hope it turns out in your favor. And it definitely worked out that time. Something just occurred to me. Should have thought about this a little bit earlier. Ha! <laughs> ha! Yeah. That should have occurred to me earlier. Yep, yep, yep. You know. I completely forgot that uh, CW has been running streams. Um, now his is only probably going to go for a half hour or so. So I'm not going to terminate my stream, but I would like to watch his. That presents a conflict now, doesn't it? Also, I'm looking at his calendar, and I'm seeing that on the 28th, he's got um, some sort of crazy house, something or other planned. Hmm. There's... If I were to do something crazy house related, I'm, it'd be so cool to get it featured on his stream at some point. There's no way I could possibly get the AI going before the 28th. Yeah. Now, even if I could get a working AI, it wouldn't be that strong, so... That's yeah, too bad. Uh, just the timing of it all.
Yeah, no, he, he very well might join this. Uh, I'm not sure how he would feel about this half plus O format. But he'd probably feel better about this than he would about this one. Because at least here he gets to play some moves in the opening. Um, huh. But yeah, uh, I guess I'll let him know about the Atomic Apocalypse, and uh, maybe he'll join, maybe. <laughs> he's probably going to think we're all nuts. Uh, he's probably going to play some slower Atomic. Unless everybody on the server is like in this tournament. And then he might say, you know what? It's going to be a lot easier to get an opponent by playing in this than by staying out of it. I'll let him know. I'll let him know. Uh, I seriously doubt that he's going to join up because he doesn't usually play this kind of instantaneously fast chess game. Uh, yeah. I totally forgot he was streaming today. And he's not going to be able to play the whole Atomic Apocalypse either, so... Actually, if he were to join, he'd just be pouncing on newbies the whole time. So, actually getting him involved, unless he's making a major commitment, would probably be an error. Um, on the bright side, well, I kind of do have to tell him about the event, though. I was going to say, on the bright side for him, but we've taken all the strong players and put them in this event. So he's able to just wallop on any other atomic players. Um, but, oh wow. How many players are there? 146. Wow, what a tournament. Yeah, like you can see the players ranking here where it says number two, number ten. Um, hmm. I'm trying to figure out if there were somewhere on the screen to show how many players are in the event. Like we're showing the event name, Atomic Apocalypse. We show the number of players who have a non-zero score. Uh, we could show Atomic Apocalypse dash number or something. Or the number of players who have actually played a game that consists of more than one move. Um, yeah, you could show such a number next to the name of the event, I suppose. I suppose there's room for it. Oh yeah, you're, you're right that I could just get the page count, multiply that by 10, and make that an estimate of the player count. I was just saying, like, if I were to put that somewhere on the screen, there is a space for it. I'd put it next to the event name. Um, so. I gotta go tell ChessWiz that uh, I work in his little Twitch chat channel and let him know, just by the way, there's this event going on. We'll see when he starts getting ready, and hopefully I'll notice and be able to let him know.
He's got to lurk in there a little bit longer. I'm sure he'll start a stream sometime, and I'll catch the start of it and let him know. Or let him know before it starts. Um, in the interim, I need food. Well, that's quite the name. Chocolate. Three, two, one, four, five, six. Oh, mate. Mate? Ah! Okay. I blame that on Unihedron going berserk. And not on him going insane. We only blame other things on his going insane. Yeah, there we go. He might have missed the one mate in one, but he's not going to miss another mate. Okay. Um, I've never understood this opening. I know it's a really popular opening, but just these openings are complicated. All right, knight d4 looks natural. So you win a queen. Oh, but he wins your queen, but you're threatening mate. Oh, but he's checking you. Now, uh. Now I get it. Okay. Hey, we all learned something about openings today. They're hard. Until you know them all, and then they're all easy. And he was so close to winning on time, too. Only eight seconds away.
looks like Unihedron's back on fire. Ah, the awesome electronic music you're listening to, huh? Huh. I was like, how is this game not over? Queen d8 mate is not actually mate. That's clever. Bishop e2, though, right? And then rook f6, rook e6. If only there were a way to trade off for that dark... Oh! Okay, wait. A lot of things just happened there. Bishop takes knight a bit more accurate than pawn takes. However, black's rook's more active, but white's out of time. Man, I kept looking for ways to activate that rook on the e-file, and I didn't see anything. instead of, say, C4. There's something I don't understand. I guess C4 encourages some kind of blocking on E6. Ooh, that's not going to work. Yep. GG. Kaboom. Yep, yep, yep. Usually Chess Wiz has like some little music ditty he plays before his stream goes live. It's usually, usually actually quality music too. Um, I don't know where he gets it from. I have guesses, but uh, anyway. Huh, why that square? Why take c7 when d6 looks so appealing? Actually, in that case, I'm just completely correct. <laughs> what a game. What a game. Both players missing mate in one. Uh, that's how you know it's exciting. It's Berserk and Hyperbullet, so players are going to miss mate in one. 
Um, this is ridiculous. Okay, that stops the knight d5 from winning the queen. That stops queen h4. That g5, I don't know what it does. I'm sure there's a knight. I guess it makes black's king a little bit safer, ironically. Well, yeah, if, especially if you get to play g4. Uh, white's kind of misplayed this. And now we see e4. And move the queen. There we go. Move the bishop. That's not a bishop. Okay, three knight. But now you move the bishop. That's also not the bishop. They take the queen. And yeah. And black resigns. All they need to do is survive for two more seconds, but it didn't seem realistic. Yeah, in those situations, you either resign or just move instantaneously in hopes that your opponent um, doesn't move quickly. Some people do do that. Ooh, that's not f4. Wait, what? What's going on here? What's this f3 stuff? Uh, okay. White gave a queen. And the center is opening rapidly. And... Uh, <laughs> okay. Well, it looks like Unihedron's tricked creeds here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty special. Here's our friend Chess Ox. Or as Zug says sometimes, Chess Ox. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Wait. What the heck is Chess Sucks doing? It makes... It makes about as little sense as... I don't even know. Yep, so you have to take... Oh, you have to take the queen. You might not want to, but that's kind of necessary. Um, okay. And now just h5 or a5. Take the bishop. Take the bishop. Okay, whatever. Taking it was making one earlier, but there's no time to think. Take the pawn. Block the pawn. Block the, okay. Push the h pawn. Oh crap. Oh crap. King c4, king d. Okay, keep moving. Um, push a pawn somewhere. Oh, that's too bad. That's just pure skill right there. Unfiltered raw talent. Did I not see? Is Chess was not attempting to go live at this moment? I thought I saw something. Maybe I just imagined it. Okay. you have to worry about that chess sucks. It's 
Some of us are crazy already. Yeah, so. Obviously taking... Oh. Oh. Well, that's tricky. Yep. Pre-moves are dangerous. But pre-moves make it possible for you to win or lose in less than a second. Um... <laughs> Can you imagine if this site would prevent you from playing pre-moves in positions where one or more pre-moves could lose the game for you? Can you imagine what the dynamic would be like if you could if you suddenly became safe to do pre-moves? And we were talking about to kids about just saying use safe pre-moves. Uh, castle? Uh, C6. Then bishop E6 and castle queenside. Oh, you can't castle queenside. Never mind. Uh, and three forces the rook off. Yeah, now all you have to do is get that pawn to move forward one square and you have got this. Oh, except uh, you can't force the pawn to move forward. Okay, now I suddenly see, in light of what's been played, why both players have been maneuvering around and not directly attacking each other. Now it all makes sense. Hence all the indirect threats. That was a really cleverly played game. A highly nuanced game that I didn't appreciate until I saw it unfold. I think both players had appreciation for what was going on. <laughs> I like my explosion colors. I think they really fit with my theme. That said, my whole theme looks interesting on this one. But yeah, I was able to take all the red out of the explosions and substitute in green and blue. Um, in a very interesting way. I tried it the other way, where the blue was the center of the explosion and the green uh, for the remainder. But no, I like the way it turned out a lot better. Because the light blue fades into the board colors uh, uh, more gracefully than green fades into it. Yeah, well it's not bad, it's just dangerous, and I wouldn't do it. Okay, this chest was seriously not, like, gone live yet. What's he waiting for? I want to tell him about this tournament, but if he's not live, then it's kind of difficult to know if he's there or not, so that's why I keep waiting. Ah uh, yes, the queen by itself is a strong attacking piece. And not a very subtle one. Although when it switches colors of squares, um, it's not immediately obvious. Oh, hey, look at that. I've not seen that move in a while. Yep. Knight d4. Oh, e4. Okay. Stuff's aggressive, man. No 
Now we got another card to G7. So I might actually see an end game in Atomic here. Okay. But why Queen G4? Is the past H pawn that strong? Or is the Queen on F3 that weak? Like what's the purpose of this line? Okay, now let's just G go. Never mind. I think all of us overlooked Bishop takes B5 until Unihedron played it. Alright, so Queen H2 or not. Would have been brilliant! We have to go like Queen H2 to G3 to A3 to somewhere to D6 to C7. We'd have to go pretty much around all four corners of the board to safely traverse the queen, or to sort of safely traverse it next to the opponent's king. That would have been absolutely brilliant. Um, or at least it would have looked hilarious. Usually the queen is a direct attacking piece, but see it march around the entire board to get to where it's going is pretty funny. Chess fan 001, the first chess fan. Unihedron ponders his first move and selects e5. I choose you, e5. Well said. That should be a quote. I should just start every game with I choose you. Except Nintendo's probably copyrighted the phrase or something. So I can't use it. Um... Okay. Whoa, 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 what happened there? No, seriously, uh, none of these moves are making sense to me. No! Oh, God. Okay, well, I guess against... You know, what happens if knight c7, king e7? Is white not just lost there? <sighs> what what is going on? This game made no sense to me before I started streaming, and now it makes even less sense. Mm. But hey, a win on time is a win. Or what my resignation's a win. Gosh, that was a resign win. Okay. So So what now? Let me check. Surely Chess Whiz is going live momentarily. Or not going. Oh, yeah, okay, it's a swindle. Yeah, it's a very, very psychologically motivated swindle in that, like, he missed a couple opportunities in a row just where he had pretty convincing moves. Um, Usually, you try to swindle with the black pieces, not so much with the white pieces. Usually, you could just win with the white pieces. At least the top atomic players do. Um, the top atomic players just win with both colors. I lose with both colors, so what am I talking about? But, um, Simple piano. Okay, I have no idea whether Chess Whiz is in his own channel. Um, I am 
just no, he's actually not seen there. Well, it's a few minutes before he's scheduled to start. I'm going to announce this. Uh, I s oh, okay, he's starting. Uh, let's see, is he in the channel yet? got the announcement out. He might join us, he might not. Time will tell. Let me mute my mic so I can listen to him. And I'll be back in a few minutes. And I'll keep you guys posted as I hear what we're planning. I'm guessing he's probably not going to join, but we'll find out.
Hey, hey, hey. So, chest was just wrapped up. Um, finished 23rd place out of his half hour of playing. Not bad at all. Not bad. Oh, most impressive amongst his accomplishments in the brief half hour in which he played is he did manage to trip up uh, the tournament leader, Creed's. Um, giving Uniheater in another shot in first place, kind of. But man, I find it amazing how many points have been scored in this event. It's pretty crazy. Oh, well there goes the keg. still struggle with why anybody would want to play a thousand consecutive games, but sure. Kudos to those who do. Also, thanks to Chess as a Stream, I now realize that One Night C3 is a playable atomic opening, and it's not bad. It's certainly enough to beat the tournament leader, so <laughs> yeah, you can't feel too bad about it. All right, so um, ooh, that doesn't look right. That whole F four looks really weakening. Uh, you push, yeah, get the bishop out. Take the rook. Take the rook. There we go. And white's out of time. The valiant effort by white just didn't pan out. F3, F6, Knight D4, C6, Knight F5, E6, Knight takes G7, Queen B6, E3, Queen C5, C3, Queen F5, F3, Knight A6. Queen a4, b5, queen h4, king d8, queen takes f6, bishop b7, d4, b4, bishop takes a6, b takes c3, knight c3, rook b8, knight a4, a6, knight d5, king e8, knight takes d7, Oh, I applied a custom user style. Um, that's how I got uh, these special fancy colors. It's much more colorful than your standard Lee chess. Uh, I find this more bearable than the standard view. Um, your opinion will almost certainly differ from mine, but I really like this view a lot better. Um, it reminds me that there's more to the site than just the chessboard. That you, there's actually like players and clocks and uh, all these links, all these places on the page. And why do I do this, do you ask? Well, part of it is because I like the way it looks. And part of it is that I spend so much time looking at a computer screen that... Um, I don't know, anything that makes the screen more difficult for me to use is just uh, frustrating. And I find that Lee Chess is easier for me to use this way because I can see what it is that I'm clicking on. Uh, oh, where are the places next to the names come from? No, that's actually new. That's a new Lee Chess feature that got rolled out within the last week. 
Um, I don't know specifically when in the last week, but that definitely got rolled out very recently. Uh, I very much like it. So you get that with or without the style. Uh, one thing you'll find is that some streamers don't capture that area of the screen. So that might not have, say, appeared in Chess Wiz's stream. Um, but I capture it because I think that's relevant. It's not just relevant, but it's useful. Now, there might be a better place I could put that, maybe. Like, maybe I could put it, that ranking, on the same line as the user's profile, but I'd have to use a user script to do that. I'm sorry, I put that on the same line as the user's name. Um, there is space for it there, but I don't have any problem with where it's at, so I don't have no need to move it. Um, actually, if I were to move it anywhere... No, I actually like where it's at. It's not distracting, but it's still informative if you're curious. What would be awesome is if that ranking um, dynamically moved. Like if that, oh hey, we look, we got creeds again. Also, if that ranking were somehow, uh, I don't know how you would style it, but if you had some custom styling for the ranking, so, so it would clearly show you, like, this guy is doing awesome, he's on a hot streak or whatever, versus um, this is somebody who just entered the tournament and we have no idea, versus this guy's been playing the whole time and he's not winning. It would be nice if it sh could indicate between those. Queen takes rook. Okay. Queen takes rook. Okay. That's pretty unpleasant for white. Okay, rook f3. Rook f3. Rook f3. That works too. Sorry to suggest moves for the opposition, but at some point you realize that um, it's a matter of technique and it really doesn't matter what the defender plays. So then you start throwing out moves for the attacker. Uh, usually I recommend ideas from the perspective of the player to move for, um, we'll say our champion. He might not be the tournament champion, but he's the champion in all of our hearts. But when you're lost, then sometimes I'll throw out suggestions for the opponent instead. Oh, are you kidding me? Huh, so you know how I mentioned I would show the player rank elsewhere on the screen. Well, it turns out great minds think alike. Um, there's just a commit in the source code that says they're going to show the player rank other places on the screen also. That's pretty cool. And that got committed before I made my suggestion, and I didn't look at it. And I came up with the same idea. Here's our battle of wits between the two strongest players in the event. Uh-oh. 
Yep, yep. That happens from time to time. Although, in fairness, it's really hard to imagine what he would have done elsewise. Uh, or otherwise is a better word, not elsewise. That should totally be a word, though. Somebody make that a word. <laughs> okay. The Anhedrins played 278 games in a row. And I think he's starting to get the hang of this variant. I kid. Sorry, I, I drifted off a little bit there. Sorry about that. I drifted off because uh, the, the Leechess developers. <laughs> yeah. Leechess developers are having some fun discussing really crazy ideas. So I might have just accidentally suggested uh, a variant to a popular board game um, that could legitimately become a thing. Uh, it's pretty ridiculously insane. And I have no idea how it would work, but yeah. I hope that that becomes something. game finished a minute ago. One thing I do miss that used to be, well, I don't know if it was on this page. Um, I think it was. I think you were able to see the tournament clock across a wide variety of pages, not just the tournament page. It was probably a pain to get the clock showing on every page, but I actually liked being able to see it, like, from this view. And I guess the challenge with that is, like, if you're in this view, yeah, I don't know how it would all work. Like, if you're playing in a marathon and playing in some other tournament and maybe playing in a simul, and, I mean, there's a lot of things to consider in terms of how the page would lay out that really weird case um, but it'd be cool to show the clock on this page so you have some uh, concept of uh, how much time is left in the event oh, or I could just look down and see that it was scheduled uh, about five hours ago and it takes about six hours so there's probably an hour left give or take Oops, I forgot one thing. I forgot that I want my server up. Uh, there we go. Server is 
going to be back up in just a minute. Huh. I didn't see that explosion removing the queen. I guess that was the whole point of moving the king in the corner, right? That's pretty clever. Fortunately for Unihedron, his opponent missed it too. So now, do I pounce on the tournament and take all the rating points from people who are completely exhausted? Or would that be unfair? No, I'm not good enough of an atomic player to pull that off, but if I were, that'd be hilarious. Wait, that's mate. I thought the pawn was not that far advanced. Yeah, b3 could have stopped rook takes b2 mate. But yeah, checkmate also stops checkmate. Uh, who knew, right? Queen h4, queen c4, queen c2. Uh, huh. Yeah, I'll just develop on that side of the board. That way you lose the fewest pieces. Play d5 so you don't get mated. I guess king e7 makes sense. Ooh, what's going on here? That's going to be very critical for a moment, and I realized, you know, there might be actually something to this. Um, like rook c8, mating ish, maybe? Actually, got it. Oh! That, okay, so I recognize that position from a different game. But I, in that game, White ran out of time before he could play king d2. And I was thinking, surely if White played king d2, you just play rook c2, and somehow there would be a mate. Uh, rook d1 is even more effective, and probably better. Here's Rex. He tends to wreck everybody. Okay, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, I mean, I get this is popular. I've not seen b5 until today. So either this is a thing that just Rex does, or it's actually okay opening in its own right. And I'm a bit confused how... Okay, so yeah, the idea is queen d2, h6. Uh, or maybe that. Oh! Oh wait, no, the knight moves. Otherwise, yeah, the queen goes without um, any compensation. Wait, what? Why would you take b5? What was it doing to you? Take it. There we go. Queen d8 was obviously a mouse slip, but if you don't take it, then what are you doing? You're not competing. You're just playing the game for fun. But no, you played a good game throughout that anyhow, so just nothing to be, be ashamed of. Really, anything goes in bullet or hyper bullet. Uh, still, I gotta find some way to refute b5, because it just looks wrong to me. How can that move possibly be acceptable? I just don't understand. Yep, in the words of Chess Sucks, 2500s are easy. Chess Sucks is words, not mine. Although I can repeat them and say 2500s are easy according to Chess Sucks. Alright, so Rook C7, 
rook c6, rook b1, rook c8, a4. Why would you even go there? Oh, okay, I guess this mates. I was thinking, like, that pawn on the A file is an easy win. Um, but yeah, you're right, that the rook against the king just mates over there. Um, but if not for that, then my A pawn strategy would have been brilliant. I mean, it was brilliant anyway, because I thought of it, but, um, let's see, what else is there? E3, D6. Well, well, well. Looks like Unihedron's seen this one before. Looks like he knows what he's doing. Knight takes. Or not. C6. Knight C2. That's not C2. There we go. Queen A5. Queen A5. Queen A2. Okay, that's probably fine. GG. Huh. Knight H3 E6 is playable. And f5 is playable in a surprising number of positions. Queen uh, h5. Uh, leave the bishop hanging there because YOLO. Uh, okay. I don't understand how you could just leave a bishop hanging on b4, but maybe it's part of the opening. Uh, b4. Oh, take it. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And now black has a substantial advantage. Now he just has to use his rooks and just win. D3. D3. There we go. Take. Ricky. Yeah, no, you just take the rook. Ricky 2. That's not E2. Hadrian, I'm going to have to teach you an endgame. But no. I mean, you've had some convincing other endgames, so who am I to criticize? Who am I, sitting out of this tournament, to criticize your moves? That makes me redouble my efforts and really consider that I ought to play in this thing. Not on the big screen. The big screen's all unihedrons, but I could play on my other screen here. Let me just make sure I get the right device hooked up and we'll get rolling. Is this it? Okay, that looks like that's the right adapter. If I just plug that in over here. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so here I am, logging in. I guess my goal is to see if I can ever get a pairing with Unihedron in this event. Probably not, but let's see. Let's see. We've got an hour to go. So we got some chances. Ready. Ready. Oh, if I were smart about this, I'd have some kind of board, like a mini board on the stream that could show my games. Yeah, not that good. But... Oh, we're ready. Oh, we're ready. We're so ready. Uh...
that. I have started with one win. If you guys are curious about my progress, you can always go to Leech Us and check me out there. Okay, so I'm quickly ascending the ranks. At least I'm getting my way out of the 100th place. And hopefully up to at least 30th place. And we'll see. Maybe I can get paired with Unihedron if I play well enough. Oops, let's not get mated. I tried to move one of my pieces through one of my other pieces. I'm just that good. Okay, three wins in a row. We'll see how long it takes for me to catch him. Oh, Knight. Okay, that Knight's going on a journey there, I see. Oh, I am ready. Maybe. Don't quote me on that. Oops, I just sacked a queen. And my opponent didn't take it. It's still, still hanging. I'm trying to find a way to unhang it without losing my king. Okay. I found a way to unhang it. Uh, and maybe I can win my opponent's queen. Alright. Four in a row. Oh, hey, look, he won another game. I didn't mean to sound so surprised, but well done. Ooh, e6. Wow, this um, this is a strategy I, ooh, hang on, I better move. Wouldn't do for me to lose on move one. Awesome, I got my opponent to resign in two moves. Okay. Oopsie daisy. Knight c3, knight f6 is something to worry about. Note to self, don't lose um, that early in the game.
got to shuffle my pieces until magic happens. All right. 89th place. I'll take it. Uh, is Unihidden taking a break? If he is, maybe I should put my games up on the big screen. Um, or is he just trying to get a pairing? I can't tell. Um, probably should have looked at my opponent's rating before the game instead of during it. Oops, there goes my queen. Ha! I beat a 2,000 by just moving quickly. All right. Just have to confuse them all. Oh, whatever works, you know? sure what to play against 2c3. There must be some reason it's unpopular. seconds is a king worth? Can somebody answer that for me? Well, apparently in this game it's worth a, um, you know, two tenths of a second. That's how much a king's worth. Oops. Okay, well, I've got some weak squares on my side of the board. Um, what do I do? I appear to be losing my king, one way or another. Hey, look, I beat a 2,000. And look, my rating is actually in the 2,000s. I forgot I am a 2,000. Um, maybe I do need to feature my games on the big screen. Yeah, no, my the point of my stream was to be featuring Unihedron here, who seems to either be taking a break or having challenging challenges getting a pairing. Um, and it's okay if he wants to take a break. Uh, that's totally cool. I would. But he's also trying to set some record as to how many games he can play in a row. Uh... Just 
2100. Wow. Oh, but the reason I'm streaming him is because uh, he doesn't himself um, have a... He's not, at the moment, able to stream. So, I'm covering that on his behalf. Just to uh, popularize the event. And maybe even popularize his attempt a little bit. Um, 